Hello dudes and dudettes, welcome to your ninth Roblox Lua Intermediate Scripting Tutorial. Today I'm going to talk to you guys about bindable events. There's also another kind of bindable called bindable function, but I'm going to save that for the next video. Kind of like how I did with remote events and remote functions. Uh, before I start, uh, so I've had another month long period of inactivity on my channel. Uh, just haven't had motivation to do anything as well as I've been running out of ideas on stuff to do videos on but I should probably start looking at your guys suggestions for that a um, couple changes well there's only one change I have a new YouTube profile picture thingy that was made by a dude on my Twitter I shouted him out uh, I think he does them for free, if you guys want to try to get one from him. Uh, we reached a thousand subscribers. That's a uh, small milestone. Milestone nonetheless. Uh, so, like I said, zero motivation to do anything, but the motivation that I have been able to conjure up has been put into my game called Octopus, which is hopefully going to release a little bit later this month but it'll probably be next month <coughs> next month because I'm a slacker uh, it's a pretty cool game you should check it out if you guys want to see gameplay just search up Octopus Roblox on YouTube t two guys that I know of did videos on them Productive Mr. Duck and then I forget the other dude's name uh, I've been working on this the past couple days Bio Boggler uh, this was for my final project for 11th grade biology class. I'm going to be senior next year, yay! Uh, took me just a few hours total. I started it Monday and finished it earlier today. So that's that. Um, okay, let's get started. So I like to keep my bindables in replicated storage uh, as well as my remotes but it doesn't really matter it's up to you guys uh, in terms of okay well first I need to explain how they work they work kind of like remote events and remote functions except for remotes are for client to server and vice versa communication bindables are for communication between uh, different server scripts to server scripts and different local scripts to local scripts but that doesn't mean um, that two clients can communicate through a bindable event if you want two clients to communicate to each other you're gonna have to use a remote event to pass whatever you want to do through the server and then to that other client um, yeah, these are for two local scripts on the sa same client. And when I say two, uh, it's not necessarily two. You can uh, set up the event in one local script and fire to it from other local scripts on the same client. Um, let me show you guys what I'm talking about. And you can even do it through one local script. Okay, so uh, if you guys watch my tutorials on remote events, you'll probably recognize what I'm doing here with the arguments I'm passing. 
Uh, same with remotes, I just pass in request for what I want to do and then a data a table of whatever necessary data needs to pass in for that I need to pass in for what I want to do. So I'm telling the bindable I want to print my stuff, so I'm checking if the request is that and then it's gonna print the contents of the table or it's gonna check for another request By the way, guys, the unpack function, it just prints out the contents of the table so you don't have to do for IV and pairs data to print IV. Uh, yeah, unpack does that for you. So, I'm going to run that. One, two, three, hi. And it did the other thing, it made that break and it named it a name. Uh, so yeah, the, pr the in terms of API, the only unique things about bindables are their, their method fire and their event called event, which is just an event you set up to do whatever and then you can fire from any other local script or whatever. Now we're gonna make a server script. And uh, I'm, I'm gonna suck. Right, one, I'm gonna delete this. I'm gonna wait a couple seconds to give this second script time to set up this code. And you'll notice it's gonna do the same thing. Names it a name. So, yeah, we can use it to communicate between two different scripts. I'll cut that. And now, server scripts. server and yeah you can see that it does the same thing in the server script and just to show you that uh, it can't do client to server communication like a remote event can I'm gonna put that same code that's setting up the event in a local script and we'll see if it prints on the client as well you can see it prints the stuff on the server but nothing on the client. That's because we're firing from a server script, so that event is only going to be received in a server script. It's the same concept for bindable functions, except the syntax for that is a little differently. <coughs> it's done a little, a little differently, uh, as well as the purpose is a little bit different. Uh, so bindables are pretty much the same as remotes, except it's not client to server communication. Mm, what else is there to talk about? There is not really anything else to talk about. I'll hopefully get the next video up in a few days. I probably said that the last time and didn't do it, but I'll try my best, guys. If you guys want to keep in touch with me, just see what I'm doing. Uh, 
you guys are probably familiar with my group Nightmare Studios. I recently set up an official Discord server for it. So, uh, I'm gonna try to get things going there. You guys can join Nightmare Studios if you're not already in it, and join that Discord if you want to keep up with me. Keep up with my games, see what I'm doing, stay in touch. Uh, next video coming soon, guys. Thanks for watching.